Greetings. Why, I believe that Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel is the most dangerous human being in the entire history of the human race uh, from the point of view of <clears throat> endangering all of us with nuclear annihilation. So we, we think about uh, how many people have lived, how many human beings there have been in, in, uh, in, in humanity's entire history on Earth. And you figure there's 8 billion people right now, right? So it'd be tough enough to be the most dangerous person among all living human beings right now, 8 billion people. And I think I can make the argument uh, and convince those of you who are open to it that Benjamin Netanyahu is the most dangerous man for nuclear annihilation alive now. Um, and then, of course, really, nuclear weapons have been so recent. You know, only the first one ever used in 19... Wasn't it 44? Uh, you know, not... Well, no, 45 would have been in Japan, right? Hiroshima, Nagasaki, 45. So, um, you know, I'm defining the most dangerous, which I think you would too, right? Is a nuclear annihilation, right? The whole uh, human race, so to speak. I mean, so we go back to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Who are, the, who are the four most dangerous in terms of nuclear annihilation? So for us in the United States, it would be, you know, Nikita Khrushchev is on the list. He really could be the worst because we really almost came to it in the Cuban Missile Crisis. It goes back quite a ways. I was only like nine years old at the time, so we'd, I live in Miami, but whatever it is. So that was then... And he probably, he could have been the worst. Uh, but then we go into the present day and you got um, uh, the Russian leader, Vladimir Putin, has been rattling this the nuclear saber over his uh, war crime invasion of uh, Ukraine, uh, number two. And then you have Netanyahu and Biden committing outrageous, in our faces, war crimes murdering over 10,000 children. That's a war crime in and of itself. They're continuing to do it, double down on it. And then planning to uh, Netanyahu and his government saying that they're going to kill every last Arab in Gaza and start uh, Jewish-Israeli settlement of Gaza. So that's a horrendous war crime. It's like, you know, it's been referred to, uh, this is the first live on air shall we say televised genocide and you know when you read the legal definition of genocide at, uh, by the United Nations uh, what's what Netanyahu and company this this extermination of all the Arabs in Gaza does fit the definition of genocide in that case it's pending by South Africa um, but here comes, here's why, so, so let's suppose that World War III starts. Um, what would World War III be? There's a report in the news, I don't know if you're aware of this, that Russia has already sent missiles that have detonated inside Israel. And that, that would, if it's true, that means World War III has already started, where you have the United States engaged militarily on one side and Russia on the other. And, you know, to be honest with you, I, I mean, I'm trying to be, speak from the heart here. If Russia did it, I don't blame them. Uh, you know, there shouldn't, we, this, this genocide by Biden and uh, Netanyahu needs to be stopped. Um, but then again, that means we're in World War III, if it's true that that happened, right? 
And the thing is, then, uh, you got we, uh, nine minimum countries that have nuclear weapons. None of them can be controlled. They, they, each one can start uh, by pressing the button. And I think here it comes now. Here's my argument that of all nine countries, maybe 12, because I, I don't know if Australia may have a nuclear weapon and maybe others that I'm not thinking of, um, but you, the two hotheads are Israel and uh, North Korea. We know they're just... So, uh, but I think actually, if we look at the conduct of Benjamin Netanyahu, when he's being adjudicated by the International Court of Justice as to whether he's guilty of war crimes, and of course, an outcome of this can be what happened to Putin with uh, his invasion of Ukraine. The court can issue an order of arrest. And you tell me. See, so so he said, first of all, he's going to continue his uh, belligerent military. He's going to continue killing children in Gaza. He's going to uh, do the, you know, kill every last Arab in Gaza no matter what the court says, he's not going to take orders from the International Criminal, the an International Court of Justice. So he, he's defying international law. He's breaking it, right? He, he says, I don't care what they say. I'm going to continue doing this, which is really amazing, right? Killing children every day. That's a war crime, yes. And he's, he's killed over 10,000. Uh, and he says, I don't care what the court says, I'm going to continue doing it. And so let's suppose then that the court steps in and says, okay, we adjudicate you guilty and uh, you need to submit to arrest. Well, wh what would you bet? I bet he'll go boom and start a nuclear, well, he'll launch, right? Against God knows many targets because they got plenty of nukes, Israel. Um, and then the problem is that you get this chain reaction where each country, uh, has its own use it or lose it, paranoid, uh, self-defense decision-making. And no one wants to be the, the country that gets taken out by a f first strike action. So you know, if this could easily blow up into uh, world, into nuclear war, where all of us lose, right? Initiated, right, by Benjamin Netanyahu. Ergo, he is the most dangerous human being who has ever lived on planet Earth.